Thank you, thank you. Oh, hello, Milwaukee. Hello. Well, thank you very much, and I'm thrilled to be back in Wisconsin, where we had a very big night a few years ago. You remember that very big night? Remember that? They said Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin. And since then, we've produced everything we said, and more, and more. Before it was talk, I said, I'm going to do this. We're going to take care of your trade. What we've done with China now, on Wednesday we signed, that's tomorrow. What we've done with the USMCA. What we've done with Japan, $40 billion trade deal. And a lot of it has to do with the farmers. South Korea. Oh, you got to love Trump. You got to love Trump. And your great Green Bay Packers are playing San Francisco this weekend. Good luck. So do we have any Green Bay Packer fans here tonight? That's what I think. And you have a great quarterback who's a good guy. Good guy. As we begin the year, our economy is booming, wages are rising, poverty is plummeting. Crime is falling, and America is the envy of the entire world. And then our opponents say, we're not going to win. Let's impeach President Trump. Let's impeach him. Got the greatest economy in our history. Our military has been totally rebuilt. Let's impeach him. But we've created 7 million jobs since the election, including more than 1 million manufacturing and construction jobs. Nobody thought that was possible. And we will soon be replacing the NAFTA catastrophe, one of the worst trade deals in the history of the world, frankly, with the incredible USMCA, Canada, Mexico, a giant victory for Wisconsin workers, farmers, and dairy producers. A tremendous victory. And we may get that all taken care of this week or next week. Just needs one more vote, and we'll get that out of the Republican Senate. The Republican Senate will be great. Tomorrow, we'll also be signing our Phase 1 trade deal with China, massively boosting exports of products made and produced right here in the great state of Wisconsin. So after years of devastating defense cuts, we have fully rebuilt the United States military to a point that it has never been before. And it's now more advanced, more lethal, and more powerful than ever. And last year, our great American warriors, because that's what they are, and they love it. I got to tell you, I know so They love it, right? They love, they love doing that. They wouldn't trade places with me under any circumstances. They wouldn't trade places with all of our great Wisconsin politicians. They want to be a military warrior. And we don't want them for that. We want them doing what they're doing. But our great warriors carried out a daring nighttime raid and terminated the founder and leader of ISIS. The animal known as al-Baghdadi is dead, and the wicked caliphate is 100 percent destroyed.
And I will tell you, when we took over a little less than three years ago, ISIS was all over the place. Now the caliphate is 100 percent destroyed. Do you remember what I wanted to leave when it was at 98 percent? I said, let some of the other countries finish it off. We're going home, right? They all said, oh, no, sir, please finish it off. So we finished it off. It's 100 percent. A few days ago, we took bold and decisive action to defend American lives and deliver American justice. At my direction, the United States military launched a flawless precision strike that killed the world's number one terrorist. Number one terrorist. You know who that is? Qasem Soleimani, number one terrorist in the world. Soleimani was responsible for murdering and wounding thousands of Americans and was actively planning new attacks, but we stopped them cold. And frankly, they already started the attack, as you saw in Baghdad, on our very large embassy in Baghdad. That was already started. And I said to our generals, get there now. We don't want to have another Benghazi on my watch, on any watch. They said, sir, we'll be there tomorrow. I said, nope, you got to be there right now. Get them over there now. Now. And they had thousands of soldiers. They were soldiers. You take a look at that crowd. That was not protesters. They were soldiers. And they were surrounding our embassy in Baghdad. And all of a sudden, they see uh, these beautiful very expensive, I will tell you, brand new Apache helicopters roaming over the top. And then they see our great military. You saw them in the plane, right? Some of them were getting out of their pajamas. They were, I said, don't worry about it. I said, we won't put that on. But they were sitting there, and they were calling a roll call in the plane, right? And it was a beautiful sight. And these guys were better than Tom Cruise at his best. So tomorrow, with the fake news, here's your headline. Here's your headline. You know, we have thousands of people outside wanting to get in. They can't, because you people got here first. But so here's your headline. Tomorrow, protesters disturb the rally. One protester, a very weak voice. You know, if you people wouldn't go crazy every time you see something, You'd go right through it. Nobody would even know she was there. Now, she's going home to mom, where she will be in big trouble. Because I guarantee you that mom voted for Trump. And in 10 years from now, when I run yet again, she'll be voting for Trump, too. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. We drive them crazy. We drive them crazy. They say, you know he's not leaving, don't you? He's never leaving. They say he's going to win. He's never going to leave. You know, these people, it's called Trump derangement syndrome. It really is. They are. They are so cool. 
You know what they don't know is that if for any reason after five years we do leave, which we will, because I believe in that stuff, right? But you know what's going to happen to their industry? They're all going to die and fold up. Going to be very boring out there, very boring. That's why I say at some point, every single one of them will be endorsing Donald Trump. But crazy Bernie Sanders and the Washington Democrats, by the way, Bernie is surging. Bernie, Bernie is surging. Bernie. But the Democrats are outraged that we kill this terrorist monster, even though this monster was behind hundreds and hundreds of deaths. That's two. Hey, speaking of protesters, have you seen what's happened in Iran? The protesters are on our side. First time ever. Huh? They're on our side. In fact, they put this big American flag on the street. And the Iranians, thousands and thousands of Iranians, we're supposed to walk on it and trample it and step and beat the hell out of it. Every one of them went around that flag. They like Trump. They like you. I'm just your representative. But they like us. They like us. They haven't seen anything like that in a long time. They went around. Did you see it? They went around the flag. They didn't want to touch it. They love America. They love our country. That's called progress. That's called progress. But the Democrats are doing everything possible to disparage what we did with the hit on this monster. You know, many of the young men and women you see walking around without arms and without legs and without were done by Soleimani. That's what he loved. He loved the roadside bomb. That's what he loved. Thousands and thousands and thousands in Iraq, in Afghanistan, roadside bombs. He was the king of the roadside bombs. Great percentages of people don't have legs right now and arms because of this son of a bitch. Okay? And the Democrats should be outraged by Soleimani's evil crimes, not the decision to end his wretched life. They're saying, well, he was a general, he was this, he was that. You know what? Number one, he wasn't supposed to be there. He was a designated terrorist by President Obama, who didn't do anything about it, as usual. As usual. They don't do anything. They designate, and they don't do anything about it. He should have been killed 20 years ago. Now, here's the story with the Democrats. If I didn't kill him, and let's say we lost three, four, five embassies or bases or thousands of people or hundreds of people or two people were killed, they would have said, Trump should have taken him out. Anything we do, they go the opposite. So we kill him, and that was precision. Some people thought it went much too fast. Went too fast. So we kill them, and they say, what a horrible. If we didn't kill them, they'd say, what a horrible thing, right? You know, with the wall, we're building the wall. You know that, right? Oh, it's gone. And by the way, they think they caught me, and they never catch us. 
Because, you know, Mexico's paying for the wall. You know that. You'll see that. It's all worked out. Mexico's paying. It's driving them crazy. Now they say, okay, he's building the wall. But Mexico didn't pay. Mexico will pay. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. You'll see that. It'll come out. We'll do it sometime during the debate or maybe before our debate, the real debate, that people are going to watch. That people are going to watch. Because nobody's watching. You know? No, they haven't, they haven't been doing great on the debates, I have to tell you. But we are building this wall. We're over 100 miles right now. We're going to be expanding the length. You have a lot of natural, but you have 1,978 miles. You need 500 miles, but 700 would be good. 750 or so would be great. We're going to now get it up. We have all the financing. You think it's easy getting financing. When people put, I can get anything from them. I can get whatever I want in terms of money, except for a wall. And I made one big mistake. I should have said to them, we will not build the wall. We don't want the wall. They would have insisted that we build it. We would have had all the money we wanted. I made a mistake. I made a big mistake. No, we're building the wall. It's going up, and it's going up rapidly, and very soon we'll be building about a mile a day. And we should be up to over 400 miles by next year, the end of next year, and shortly thereafter it'll be finished. And it's already having a tremendous impact on people not being able to come into our country. Bernie and the radical left cannot protect your family, and they cannot protect our country, nor do they want to, I think. According to Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren, who has somewhat less Indian blood in her than I do, and I have none. Remember? Oh, we hit her hard. But I hit her too early. But now it doesn't matter. She's not going anywhere. But Bernie said, According to her, Bernie said, and I don't believe that he said this, because, you know, I don't know him. I don't particularly like him. He's a nasty guy. But I don't believe he said it. It's not his deal. You know, you have to know what people say. He, she said, right, that Bernie stated strongly that a woman can't win for president. A woman can win for president. Fortunately, he <laughs> did. That could happen. That could happen. Who knows? But she said that Bernie said a woman can't win. I don't believe that Bernie said that. I really don't. So, you know, just know Bernie, it's not the kind of a thing he'd say. If you want to keep America safe, just vote Republican. We're doing so well. We're doing so well. Now, this was the, uh, leave him, leave him alone. That's all right. Let security just take care of him. Okay? You all right? Get him out of here. Good. Good job, security. Good job. Good job. Do we love law enforcement? Do we love them? And is there ever, ever a better place to be than a Trump rally on some night during some week? You know, the truth is, we have a great time. But you know what? More importantly, we get things done. We're getting everything done. But even President Obama's own former national security advisor, a highly respected general named Jim Jones, praised our action to take out Soleimani and said it was absolutely correct and it was the absolute right thing to do. I'm sure, I'm sure they like him very much today. He sounds like our kind of a guy. So, Jim, if they're giving you a hard time, come on over to the Republican Party. 
No, he's a respected guy. He said we did the right thing. Everyone knows. They're saying, was the attack imminent? Was it imminent? Does the fact that he's killed hundreds of thousands of people and thousands of Americans and horribly killed and wounded thousands and thousands, that doesn't matter. Was the attack imminent? I think they're going to start a new investigation. Was the attack on this horror? And by the way, he was in a country he wasn't allowed to be in. You know, we don't mention that. Because he was designated and he wasn't allowed to be there. And he was there with the head of Hezbollah. And they were talking about, like Hillary Clinton, they were talking about weddings and working out. <laughs> right? Soleimani and the head of Hezbollah, they were talking about weddings, working out, or Bill Clinton in the back of the airplane with the Attorney General. <laughs> Where they may have made her an offer that you're going to go to the Supreme Court, or they may have said you're going to stay Attorney General, but help. Help. They may have said that. Do you think they would have said that? No, nothing like that. But remember, they talked about golf and grandchildren, right? 45 minutes. You know, I like golf and I love my grandchildren. I don't think I can talk to somebody about them for 45 minutes that I don't even know. 45. I have a beautiful grandchild. He's really beautiful. He's so great. Okay, what else am I going to say, right? Then. I talk golf. Oh, let's talk one or two. How's Tiger doing? How's this one? How's that one? That's another five minutes, right? What am I going to do with the other 35 minutes? Maybe I'm going to talk about Supreme Court appointments, etc. Well, we're doing very well. But at this very moment, the good people of Iran are taken to the streets in numbers like nobody's seen before, and they're really protesting the repressive regime and demanding a better future. You know, they're great people. They're great. The great people of Iran, they're great people. They get it. And they're tired of watching their leaders plunder Iran to stoke violence and death and war. And you know, Iran's caused us problems for 40 years, just so you understand. Reagan had it, Iran-Contra. Carter had it. 52 hostages. How about that? Destroyed his presidency. He was pretty well destroyed before that war came. <laughs> but it, uh, it didn't help. It actually probably got Reagan elected, if you think about it, right? But, no, Carter had it. 52 hostages. Reagan had Iran-Contra. Obama had just, you know, he was, like, begging them for everything. But Obama gave him $150 billion, $1.8 billion in cash grief. Got zero. He got zero out of it. He got zero. Well, I'd love to have that money back. It's a lot of money. But I've warned the Ayatollah and the government of Iran that they must not harm, hurt, or kill any protesters. The whole world is watching. It's watching. They've killed thousands of protesters. We support the Iranian people and their courageous struggle for freedom. It's incredible what's going on over there. It really is. But we're watching, and we're watching very closely. And we were ready. You know, uh, that night, when the attack was made on us, the attack was made on us. Remember this. They killed an American. They killed other people just before that. And so we did what we did, right? Then they said, it's our turn now. I said, you better be careful when you say it's our turn, because we had designated targets that you wouldn't have, it would have taken them 30 years to rebuild if that was even possible. It's true. It's true. And we saw those missiles launch, and they were big and they were fast, and they were accurate. Four of them went bad. They fell way short. But 12 of them hit. And I said, man, they are quick. They knew immediately what they were. And they saw those missiles hit. I said, how bad is it? It hit a base. And an hour later or so, we get a call back. I said, how many killed? Nobody, sir.
I said, how many hurt? They said, nobody, sir. And I said, they just saved themselves a trillion dollars and a lot of lives. It's true. A trillion, not a billion, a trillion. So they did a very smart thing. And we're not looking for regime change. Uh, they've tried that with uh, Libya. They go, Hillary Clinton, let's get rid of, let's get rid of Libya. Let's get rid of Gaddafi. Let's get rid of Gaddafi. How's that working out, right? Let's get rid of Gaddafi. That was a Hillary deal. Then you had Benghazi. And see, see Benghazi, they didn't respond. They didn't respond. Should be. Should be. Should be. And then we had Iraq. They went into Iraq. The geniuses go into Iraq. Iraq didn't knock down the World Trade Center, just in case anybody had any question. And this guy did kill. He was not a sweetheart. He was a bad guy in every way. But he did kill terrorists, right? And it became Harvard University for terrorists, right? But they did go after him. But he didn't knock down the World Trade Center. So they got a lot of bad thinking. We're doing a good job. We're getting the hell out. We're moving. You know, we did something in Syria. We were guarding their border. At one point, we had thousands of people. The Syrian border between Turkey and Syria. It's been there for a thousand years. They've been fighting for many, many years under different names. I said, I'm getting our soldiers out of there. I did. I took them out. And you know what I did with the soldiers? No. They don't tell you the true story because there are a bunch of corrupt people back there. I told Turkey, you got to defend your own border. We're not going to defend your border. And we get along with Turkey. We get along. But they've been there for — and by the way, I call it a safe zone. That is the most dangerous safe zone in the world, okay? I'm looking at the audience. There's about three of you that want to be in that zone, okay? And you're very tough people. But this is the most dangerous — I call it. I call it the safe zone. Someday it may be a safe zone, but I took our soldiers out. Because we had an army here, and we had a vast number of people here, and they were going to fight. I said, if they're going to fight like they have been for hundreds and hundreds of years, for centuries, let them fight. But we're getting the hell out of there, okay? But the fake news doesn't tell you the right story. But the fake news doesn't tell you the right story. Because what I did is I took our soldiers, and you know what I did? I moved them to the oil area, and we now control the oil. So they said, Trump stayed in Syria. Trump said. So people said to me, why are you staying in Syria? Because I kept the oil. Which, frankly, we should have done in Iraq, okay? A long time ago. You have no idea the things and the decisions I've seen. So they say, Trump said in Syria. I didn't pull out. I did pull out. We have the oil really secure. We'll see what happens with it. But we can help our friends, the Kurds, because that's where they got their wealth. And then, ultimately, it was with ISIS. It was — but right now, it's with the United States military. And we also got rid of remnants of ISIS. While we're creating jobs and killing terrorists, Democrats in Congress, are wasting America's time with demented hoaxes and crazy witch hunts that have been going on, by the way, from the day I came down the escalator with our future First Lady. Somebody said to me recently, President, President, was a friend of mine, you always call me Donald. Hey, Donald, how you doing? Let's go have dinner. Okay, okay, good. Now he calls me president. I told you this before. He calls me president. They always call me president. President, president, tell me what's happening? What's going on? How's it all going? You're doing such a great job. 
He said, do me a favor, call me Davos. I can't. Now, when they say, you know what that means, right? That means respect for the offers of President. And you know what? We're going to keep it that way. We're going to keep it that way. We're going to keep it that way. But that's why this November, we're going back and we're going to win the House. The Republicans are going to win the House. Because I don't know if you know it, the impeachment hoax, which is a total hoax, a per this is based, just think of this. This is based on a perfect phone call. Did anybody read the transcript? It's a perfect call. In fact, if you go back and look at Lyndon Johnson, all of them, think of, you know, Lyndon Johnson was sort of a tough guy. Can you imagine his phone calls? He's probably looking down or looking up, and he's probably <laughs> And he's probably saying, these people have gone crazy. That's the nicest call I've ever — in fact, somebody said, I never knew you could be so nice on a telephone call. But this is all based on a simple phone call that was totally appropriate, where the president of Ukraine said there was no pressure on us, didn't even know what they were talking about. The foreign minister said they want to impeach, impeach the president of the United States over a perfect phone call, it's the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on our country, ever. But we're going to go back, and because of it in Wisconsin, I don't know if you've seen, uh, independent voters, and voters, I think, of all, of all of the voters, including Democrats moving over. We just got 195 to nothing, the Republicans in the House, which was a fix. We got 100 — you know, Nancy Pelosi says, it must be nonpartisan. It must — and she said, it has to be clear-cut. Well, number one, never happened, no problem. Number two, look at the vote. Three Democrats voted with us. So I guess you could say — I guess you could say it was a nonpartisan vote, because they voted with us, okay? But we're going back, and we're going to hold the Senate, and we're going to keep the White House, but we're going to win back the House. We're going to win back the House. And I'm thrilled tonight. A man who's become a great friend of mine, he's a warrior. Senator Ron Johnson is here. Come up, Ron. What a good guy. Congressman Brian Stile, Jim Sensenbrenner, Glenn Grothman. Glenn, come up. Come up. Mike Gallagher. Wisconsin House Speaker Robin Voss. Wisconsin State Senate President Roger Roth. State Senate President. Come on, fellas. Wisconsin State Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald. Come on. A friend of mine, a world champion. Creek, he climbs for Would you believe it? I, is Sean here? Where's Sean? Where's Sean? Get up here. I love champions. He would climb that sucker. He was the best in the world, right here from Wisconsin, right? Congressman Sean Duffy. We miss him. But, you know, he signed with CNN. They paid him a lot of money, and they don't put him on. Why? Because I'm pro-Trump. You think that's fair, right? He's pro-Trump. So what they've done is pay the money to silence him, because he has a very important voice. Great job. I like that kind of a job. I think he's okay with it. He gets his check. They refuse to put him on. He says good things about Trump. We don't want you on. That's CNN. That's how fake. Right there. Turn the camera off. And a good friend of all of ours, a Kenosha native, 
Rights Priebus. Rights, come up. Thank you, man. Thank you, Rights. This is a great group of Republican people, but more importantly, it's a great group of winners. They have been so great, so they work so hard, and I just want to thank you all for being here tonight. Well, thank you for your strong show of support for President Trump. Now, we, we, we ran a pretty tough campaign together here in Wisconsin in 2016, and when it was all said and done, I was tired. I had to take some days off. You know who didn't take any days off? President Trump. I have never seen a man work harder, being so dedicated, so in love with America. That is why we all need to make sure that he wins a second term. Also, I'm 64 years old. I've never in my lifetime seen a man or get elected president of the United States where there wasn't some measure of well wishes, some honeymoon period where America gathered around that individual and said, Mr. President, we know it's a, it's a big job. We wish you well. Keep us safe. Make this country prosperous. That hasn't happened. That's because the Democrats simply won't admit he beat them. He has been tormented since the day after the election, but he has held strong. It hasn't bothered him. He's just pressed forward. He's made this country great. Our economy is in great shape. He deserves to get reelected. Like, like all of you, like all of you, he loves this country. He will do everything to defend it. We love President Trump. God bless you, President Trump. Thank you, Ron. A great guy. Thanks to strong Republican leadership like Ron, like all of them that you just saw. America is winning again, America is respected again, and America is thriving again like never before. We're doing great. We're the envy of the world. And under my administration, we now have the lowest average unemployment rate of any administration in the history of our country. And in your great state, Wisconsin, you ever notice with Biden, he's always calling the wrong state? And in your great state of uh, Iowa, Iowa. It's Iowa, right? No, it's Wisconsin. Oh, I meant Wisconsin. Oh, I didn't know I was in Wisconsin. That's Biden. How many times has he done that? By the way, lots of times he said. It's great to be in the state of Ohio. No, sir, you're in, you're in Florida. <laughs> many times, sir. The sad part about that, Sleepy Joe is right. You know the sad part about that? When you do that, you can't really recover. You can be Winston Churchill, make the finest remainder of remarks, but you get killed. 
And he does it every time. And the fake news, they give him a total pass, and that's okay. It's all right. It's going to happen to all of us someday. <laughs> does anybody get that yet? In Wisconsin, the unemployment rate has reached its lowest level in history. How's that for a sound bite? How do you beat that sound bite, right? So now the people of Wisconsin are going to say, well, let's see, the state set a record, most successful it's ever been. And by the way, that's because we got a lot of help from a guy named Scott Walker, your governor. Ron Johnson, all those guys, because this didn't happen so quickly. But think, so how do, you, how do you beat that? You have the most successful, lowest unemployment rate you've ever had. And then they say, somebody's going to come and say, oh, we'll do a better job. Really? You're going to do a better job? The lowest in history, by far. Your number one economic numbers, by far. Oh, let's put somebody else in as president. I don't think so, right? But here's one that I love the most. African-American, Hispanic-American, Asian-American unemployment rates have reached the lowest levels ever recorded in the history of our country. And here's another one. African-American youth. You know, the way it was so high, it was so horrible. Youth unemployment has reached an all-time low in recorded history. African-American poverty has reached the lowest rate ever recorded also. And by the way, just out of curiosity, how are your 401ks doing? Are they doing okay? The only question, are you at 70, 80, 90, 97 per He goes higher. What are you at? What's yours? 100 percent. Not bad. I know who he's voting for. But think of this, because this is what it's about. It's not, you know, these companies, these big public companies, they're owned by the people. They're owned by everybody. Rich people, and they're owned by everybody. We have set 141 records on the stock market, highest levels ever in recorded history. 141 records. That means in less than three years, for 141 days, we set a record. Think of it. We've set 141 records. Who the hell can do that? And if our opponents had won the election, instead of going up, you know, we're very close to 30,000 on the Dow. Nobody thought that was possible, including the fakers back there. Nobody thought that was possible. Instead of being up, you would have down. I believe, I really believe, because regulation so important, tax cuts so important, it got it all going. I believe, instead of being up massively, whatever the number is, but depending on who you are, changes, but it's all way over 60, 70, 80. You guys know. You would have been down 50, 60, 70. You would have been down at a level you would probably be extremely depressed right now. You wouldn't have bought all those brand new Keep America great hats. Don't worry. We're never getting rid of MAGA. Don't worry. We don't have the courage to get rid of MAGA, the greatest campaign in history. We're never leaving. But you wouldn't have bought those hats. You know why? You wouldn't have had the money to buy them. Okay, now you can buy them. It doesn't mean a damn thing. So let's do it real fast. The poll, right? Make America great again or keep America great, right? You know, I don't have to go through the whole deal. We're going to do it quick. We're going to do it quickly. Ready? Who likes? Make America great again. Yeah. You're very loyal people in Wisconsin. 
Who likes Keep America Great? So it surprises me every single time, but Make America Great Again, MAGA, has never won one of these polls. You know why? We've rebuilt our military, we've cut taxes, we've cut regulation. Our stock market hit records. It's called Keep America Great. I mean, we've done so much. And I just got a free, see, these Democrats, they go out, spend a million dollars on a poll. What I do is I take my own poll, and they'll interview 203 people. 203 people say they'll get it wrong, because I'm always surprised. Make America great again, I think, is the greatest phrase ever used in politics, right? So to switch it may be crazy, so we're going to use them both, okay? We'll use them both. Use them. But under the Trump economy, the lowest paid earners are reaping the biggest, fastest, and largest gains. You know that, right? This is a blue-collar boom. They don't like telling you that. Under my administration, the growth in net worth for the bottom half of wage earners has increased 15 times more than under the three previous administrations. That's pretty amazing. Because they keep saying, oh, the rich are getting richer. Well, the poor are doing the best they've ever done. Earnings for the bottom 10 percent are rising faster than earnings for the top 10 percent, proportionately. <laughs> Under eight years of the Barack Hussein Obama administration, Which administration loves spying on people's campaigns? By the way, by the way, could you imagine if it were the other way around and I spied on his campaign? What would these fake news people be doing? More than 300,000 people under Obama, 300,000 people left the workforce, under just three years of my administration, 3.5 million people have joined the workforce, and nobody believed that was possible. 370 companies have signed our pledge to America's workers, providing more than 14 million Americans with new training and job opportunities. We're training them. We're getting them, Walmart, so many great companies. They're training people, because they can train them much better than government. 14 million, you know who's worked so hard on that? Everybody, you've heard of Ivanka, right? Ivanka. She had such a passion for it. She's very smart. I said, would you like this job? No, Dad, I want to get people working. I want to get them and help families. So I said, all right, good. Look, she's smart. Go do whatever the hell you want to do is OK, darling. So she had a goal of a half a million people. She was going to get trained, get into companies. So she'd call Walmart, she'd call Exxon, she'd call all these great companies. And all of a sudden, she hit 8 million. Then she hit 9 million. Don't forget, she wanted to do 500,000, but this is her. Then she hit 10 million. She just hit 14 million people are being trained by these great companies. 14 million. Ivanka. 14 million. Would you believe that's possible? But that's why we have the best unemployment rates. We have the best employment rates. By the way, 160, very close to 160 million people are now working in the United States. Nobody's ever even come close to that number. We've lifted 10 million people off federal welfare programs. Real median income is now at the highest level ever recorded in the history of our country. Think of that. Real, real median income. Under eight years, so we're here three years, right? But really less, because when it was done, the stats, it was two and a half. But we're here less than three. 
Under eight years of the Bush administration, household incomes grew $400. Eight years, $400. Under eight years of President Obama, household incomes grew $975. That's okay, $975. Eight years, right? Under three years of the Trump administration, household incomes have risen $10,000. Ten thousand. That's why we're doing well. The consumer, three thousand one hundred dollars, of which for regulatory cuts, two thousand dollars for the tax cuts, which is actually higher than that, two thousand five hundred dollars for energy savings, and five thousand dollars in real wage gains. Ten thousand dollars. The child tax credit alone, which every Democrat in Congress opposed, is delivering $2,200 a year to the average American family. Who's, who's in favor of that cut? Who's in favor of having that? You? People don't know. They think the Democrats gave it. The Democrats give nothing. They're too busy. They're too busy doing other things. They don't do anything. They're too busy doing other things. We ended the war on American energy. The United States is now the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere on Earth. Number one in the world by far. Saudi Arabia, Russia, but we're number one by far. And if I get a couple of additional pipelines approved, which I will very quickly, instead of waiting 20 years to get them approved, uh, it'll increase us by another 22 percent, and we'll get them done quickly. And they'll be environmentally friendly in all of that. I believe in that. We have eliminated a record number of job-destroying regulations. I brought back the old light bulb. Better light for much less money, if you want it, right? Little thing. Somebody said, oh, sir, don't mention the light bulb. You know, it's hard to make an elegant speech. I'm saying I brought back the light bulb. So the new light bulb costs you five times as much, and it makes you look orange. And I was more interested in the orange than I was in the cost. But you know what? If you want, you have it. And you know the new bulb, I don't know if you see it, it's on there. It's a hazardous waste that when that bulb ends, you're supposed to take it to a certain dump and gingerly put it in because it's loaded up with gases. That's the new. I said to somebody today in environmental protection, how many people do that in the country? Sir, maybe none. They throw it into the garbage can. But I'm also approving new dishwashers that give you more water so you can actually wash and rinse your dishes without having to do it 10 times. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Anybody have a new dishwasher? I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that. It's worthless. They give you so little water. You ever see it? Air comes out. They, so little water. So what happens? You end up using it 10 times, and the plates, then you take them out and do them the old-fashioned way, right? But what do you do? You're spending 10 times for the electricity, right? So I'm putting the water back. Most places have so much water, they don't know what the hell to do with it. You know, a lot of people don't realize that. So dishwashers now, you're going to have a, just as much as you've ever had, and you're going to use now one shot. Your dishes are going to be beautiful. I'm sorry that you just bought one of those brand new pieces of garbage, but darling, you can throw it. And it said, wait. And it was just announced from South Korea. Makes a lot of our products, unfortunately. I put a tariff on washing machines and refrigerators, right? They just announced 
that they're building major refrigerator and washing machine plants in the United States. You know why? You know why? Because they don't want to pay the 25 percent tariff. So they're building them here. That way, they don't have to pay the tariff. Right? And just one final thing. I know this doesn't matter. But I say, leave it. It's so inelegant to talk about it, right? Right? Isn't it inelegant? I'm talking about dishwashers. Wait till you hear the next one. I'm talking about refrigerators. Probably won't in the State of the Union. I'll leave it out because I want to get praised for making a — you cannot make a brilliant speech where they say, that was such an incredible, elegant speech. If I'm talking about dishwashers, sinks, toilets, light bulbs. But sinks, toilets, and showers, you don't get any water. They put restrictors on, and now they made them permanent. People used to take them out. They put restrictors on. Try going and buying a new faucet. You turn it on, no water comes out, right? We won't talk about toilets, but you know that's the — 10, 15. But we don't talk about that. Because I've said this three or four times, the only subject they ever talk about is toilets, so I don't mention it. But how about the shower? You go into a shower, and I have this beautiful head of hair. I need a lot of water. Oh, yeah. And you go into the shower, right? You turn on the water, drip, drip, drip. I call the guy, is something wrong with this? No, sir, it's just a restrictor. So you're in there five times longer than you're supposed to be. You use probably more water. And it's a very unpleasant experience, right? <laughs> they did Opportunity Zones right here in Wisconsin. And Ron Johnson helped. And Tim Scott of South Carolina helped, right? They're doing great. They are doing great. And for decades, politicians ran for office, promising to defend Wisconsin workers. But then they went to Washington and lined their pockets with special interest cash as they shipped your jobs and your dreams to countries thousands of miles away, countries that you've never even heard of. Globalist politicians lowered our economic defenses and allowed other nations to rob your factories, steal your farms. By the way, no estate tax on those beautiful farms. We got rid of that. So now, if you love your children and you have a farm or a small business, a small ranch or even a large ranch, you have no estate tax. You can give it to the kids. If you don't love your children, anybody in here does not love their children? There are some. Don't. Come on, raise your hand. There are some. Like, you know, they're brats. They're little brats. They're horrible human beings. So if you're one of them, this doesn't help you because you'll save some tax. The fact is, no estate tax on these small businesses and farms. That's a tremendous thing. Because you were dying. You were leaving the business to your kids. They all said, thank you very much, Daddy and Mommy. And then they went out and mortgaged the hell out of the place, and they ended up losing it to the banks. But we got rid of the estate tax on uh, small farms and businesses and really great things. Little stuff like that we've done that we never said we were going to do. But these people were ransacking your communities. But we are defenseless no more, because at long last, you have a president who puts America first. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. We're putting America first. On no issue of Washington Democrats more thoroughly betrayed the American people than that of immigration. He goes, traitor. Are you having a good time, sir? I think you are. He goes, traitor. They are. I guess in a certain way, they are traitors, when you think about it. Left-wing politicians, I call them the do-nothing Democrats. 
support deadly sanctuary cities demonstrating their contempt, scorn, and disdain for everyday Americans. These jurisdictions release dangerous, violent criminal aliens out of their jails and directly onto your streets, where they are free to rob, attack, and murder American citizens. You have it right here. You have it right here. Last year, ICE — I love ICE. I think they're so good. You know, they moved thousands of MS-13 out of our country. Thousands, and others, too. But ICE officers in this region of our country arrested nearly 7,000 illegal aliens with criminal records. So you have 7,000 illegal aliens having criminal records, including those charged or convicted of murder, burglary, robbery, drug crimes, Killings in the most violent way. Right here in Wisconsin, cities run by far-left politicians are releasing dangerous criminal aliens who abuse, assault, and threaten innocent children — your children. Last year, a place I like, the sanctuary county of Milwaukee released an illegal alien criminal with multiple charges for sexual assault of child — think of that — of children. He's now at large. They're searching all over. And he's looking for yet another victim. They're searching all over. Allowed to go from your sanctuary city. In the city of Madison, police arrested an illegal alien for sexual assault. After authorities released him, he committed violent battery only to be released one more time. They're looking for him again. Isn't that nice? So the same illegal alien was then arrested for a third time in September and charged with multiple sexual assaults, including sexual assault of a child. Now that criminal is once again in Wisconsin jail, and I call on your left-wing officials to stop the madness and to work with ICE to ensure he is deported the hell back home. Get him out of our country. Democrats stand for crime, corruption, and chaos. Republicans stand for law, order, and justice. It's true. It's true. We believe Wisconsin should be a sanctuary for law-abiding Americans, not for criminal aliens. We are removing these illegal criminals and gang members by the tens of thousands, and we will not let them back. And we made a deal with Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Mexico, where they accept them back. Under the Obama administration, they'd get them, they'd bring them back. And Honduras and Guatemala would say, get the hell up, we're not taking them back. But with us, they take them back. Take them back. Very good. It helped a lot when we were paying them hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Think of it. And I just said, we're not paying them anymore. All of a sudden, they said, we would love to have our wonderful gang members back. We would love to have our gang members back, sir. Thanks to our tireless efforts to secure the border, we have reduced illegal border crossings seven straight months in a row, and we're being helped by our new 100 miles plus of wall. Illegal crossings are down 78 percent since May, and we have ended catch and release. That was a tough one. Our very big and very powerful border wall is going up at a record speed, and we are at — and we're fully financed now. Isn't that nice? That wasn't easy. That was not easy. And we're adding new miles every week, and we are on track to soon build that wall. You're going to have a wall like no other. It's going to be a powerful, terrific wall. And walls do work, I hate to say. Remember the Democrats? You don't need walls. Oh, really? We, we need drones. They wanted us to put drones flying around, taking pictures of everybody. No. 
Did you see on part of the new wall uh, two days ago, illegal aliens with drugs on their back were climbing the wall. They got to the top. You know, that paddle on top is called a climb resistor. It's very slippery and very hot. Very hot. And they got stuck on the wall. They couldn't get off the wall. Did you see that? I was watching the news. I was surprised that the fake news showed it. And I said, isn't that a beautiful sight? They couldn't get over the wall. Couldn't get over. They had to get the fire department to get them down. Do you believe that? 30 feet up, that's like a, almost a four-story building. Washington Democrats have never been more extreme than they are now. They're going crazy. They're going totally loony. Nervous Nancy. How about nervous? How about her district? Her district is so filthy dirty. It's filthy dirty with all of the things, I won't say it, but the needles and everything else. These are areas that were, 10 years ago, the best in the country, and now they're disgusting. She ought to spend more time back in San Francisco taking care of her community instead of wasting everybody's time. But taking their cues from socialists, Bernie Sanders, AOC, all these people, liberal lawmakers are pushing a government takeover of health care that would strip 180 million Americans of their private health insurance. Many of you have great insurance. Republicans will never let that happen. They'll probably change their mind before the — see, this is why I don't like talking about it now. I'd rather wait six, seven, eight months, let them say it 5,000 times when they have to do it, and then talk. I'm talking too early about it. I shouldn't even be here tonight, but I love the people of Wisconsin. Now, they want to take away your private health insurance. We will protect patients with pre-existing conditions like nobody else, and we will protect your pre-existing physicians, which you've had to get rid of, which you will have to get rid of when this new plan never happens. Don't worry about it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I wouldn't worry about it. Sounds nice. It's, it doesn't even sound good, frankly. There's one that costs a fortune, doesn't even sound good. At least let it sound good. Virtually every top Democrat also now supports late-term abortion, ripping babies straight from the mother's womb right up until the moment of birth. And that is why I've asked Congress to prohibit extreme late-term abortion, because Republicans believe that every child is a sacred gift from God. Democrats are now the party of high taxes. Think of it. They want to raise your taxes. How does that work? I guess I'm old-fashioned. I've only been doing this for three years, you know, so I haven't. I'm not experienced like others. A senator came up to me, sir, I've run seven different races, and I've won five times. I said, I've done one, but I've won. But it's the big part. But no, seriously, we're all smart people. How is it good when they say, we're going to raise your taxes? The world is, is the world going crazy? They say, we're going to raise your taxes. We're going to open borders. Everybody can come into the country. We're going to pay for everybody's health insurance, schooling. You know, I one time said, we're going to get everybody a Rolls Royce. And CNN or one of them said, they never said, and they never promised a Rolls Royce. Donald Trump lied tonight. <laughs> I said, every illegal alien will have a Rolls Royce. They said, he lied tonight. These people are sick. But they're the party of late-term abortion, socialism, and corruption. The Republican Party is the party of the American worker, the American family, the American dream, and, of course, Honest Abe Lincoln, right? <laughs> Republicans are fighting for citizens from every background and from every race, religion, color, and creed. We are a movement. There's a movement like nobody's ever seen before. You know, when I mention this, anything I say that's even slightly false, it's headlines. Trump said this. These people, 
He said this. He, this is one of the greatest. I would say this. This is the greatest movement in the history of our country. I really believe that. Never been a movement like that. Right? I mean, there have been some great movements where somebody came along and out of nowhere won the state of New Hampshire, won Iowa, won South Carolina down the way, won a state someplace. But we won 32 states. There's never been a movement like this. Never happened before. But we're a movement for all Americans who believe in fairness and justice, equality and dignity, opportunity and safety. We are a big tent, and we are a big party of big ideas for the future. And that's why African Americans are joining the Republican Party like nobody ever thought even possible. They love us, and we love them. And to give former prisoners a second chance at life, we passed. It was us, not the Democrats. They came to me. They wanted help. I gave them help. I got it done. I called Republicans that maybe wouldn't have been so inclined. Some of them, some of them very much inclined. Some of them very conservative were very much inclined. But I got the people that we needed. Obama couldn't do it. Bush couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. I got it approved. And from the day it was approved, I got no thanks, I got no credit, and that's okay, because you know it. Okay? But we passed bipartisan criminal justice reform, and that's helped so many people. I mean, you know the story of Alice Johnson. You know so many different stories. It's helped so many people, especially in the African-American community, the Hispanic community. It's helped a lot of people. It's a different world. To uphold the rule of law, we have confirmed 187 federal judges, a record, who will interpret the Constitution as written. 187. And last spring, Wisconsin voters, as you know, elected a great judge to your state Supreme Court. And this spring, you have a chance to re-elect another terrific judge, Justice Daniel Kelly. Go vote for Justice Daniel Kelly to defend the rule of law in Wisconsin. Daniel Kelly. We are aggressively combating the opioid epidemic, and we've done great. Look, until you get rid of it, you never did great, but we have done numbers that nobody thought possible. In 2018, Drug overdose deaths, the overdose deaths, fell for the first time in decades, including by 10 percent in the state of Wisconsin, 17, 18, 19, and even 21 percent in a couple of states. And China is now putting a big stop a big lid on fentanyl, which is a disaster coming out of China. Said to President Xi, got to do it. People are dying, got to do it. They're doing it. And we are fighting very hard for school choice, and it's moving along well in Wisconsin. <laughs> Milwaukee created the first school choice program 30 years ago to free children from failing government schools. And now my administration is working to give school choice to every child in America who needs it. As we continue rebuilding our military, workers are building brand new Humvee replacements, you know about that, in Oshkosh, and magnificent new littoral combat ships in Marionette. A lot of ships, a lot of Humvees. I recognize Israel's true capital and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. And we recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, something they've been trying to get for 52 years. 
For years, you watched as your politicians apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America. And we are standing up for you, the people of Wisconsin. At stake in our present battle is the survival of the nation. What these people are doing, they will destroy our nation. They will destroy our nation. And our last election was so important. I don't know, maybe the most important ever, but it was so important. I really believe that this election, maybe in its own way, will be just as important. I can't say more, but just as important. Because we need time for that tree to grow. You know, you plant a tree and it takes time. We need time for that tree to grow. And we have other things that we want to do. If you want your children to inherit the blessings that generations of Americans have fought and died for to secure, then we must devote everything we have toward victory in 2020. Have to do it. Only this way can we save the America we love and drain the Washington swamp once and for all. And I have found out what a swamp is. Bad people. I have become the expert on what a swamp. And you know, when I used to say drain the swamp, I had no idea it would be that bad. But we're winning. We're here, and they're not. We're winning. We're winning. Bad people. Dishonest bad people. With your help, we will lift millions more of our citizens from welfare to work, dependence to independence, and poverty to prosperity. Together, we will elect a Republican Congress to create a fair, safe, sane, and lawful system of immigration, which now we're already doing. We're already doing a lot of it. We got to get loopholes. You know, you need their votes. We have loopholes, like visa lottery. We put names in a lottery, and they come in, they become American citizens. Do you think these countries are giving us their finest? Oh, let's give them our best citizens. Put them in. These people are crazy to allow this to happen. So we're stopping it all. But ending catch and release was a very big thing. And we did that with no Democrat help. They wouldn't do it. Call loopholes. Who wouldn't want to end loopholes? We will enact trade deals that result in more products proudly stamped with that beautiful phrase, made in the USA. We will achieve new breakthroughs in science and medicine finding new cures for childhood cancer, and ending the AIDS epidemic in America in less than 10 years. Who would have thought that? We will defend privacy, free speech, religious liberty, and the right to keep and bear arms. And above all, we will never stop fighting for the sacred values that bind us together as one America. We support, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. We stand with the incredible heroes of law enforcement. We believe in the dignity of work and the sanctity of life. We believe that faith and family, not government and bureaucracy, are the true American way. We believe that children should be taught to love our country, honor our history, and to always respect our great American flag. And we live by the words of our national motto, in God we trust. They'll always be there. We'll never let them remove it. Those words will always be there. From Milwaukee to Monroe, from Bayfield to Green Bay, good luck this weekend. And from West Bend to West Dallas, we stand on the shoulders of the most courageous men and women ever to walk on the face of the earth. Our American ancestors crossed the oceans, settled a continent, tamed the wilderness, revolutionized industry, pioneered science, won two world wars, 
defeated fascism and communism, landed men on the face of the moon, and made America the greatest nation in the history of the world. And we are making it greater than ever before. Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working, we are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one move. We are one people. We are one family and one glorious nation under God. America is thriving like never before. And ladies and gentlemen of Wisconsin, the best is yet to come. You watch. Because working together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Wisconsin. Thank you.